In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for a good weekend. Thank you for life. Thank you for the platform. Thank you for the knowledge and the learning we have gained so far. Thank you for the month of April. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for our facilitator. Thank you, Lord, because today you would give us insight into the things that would help us to leap forward and to grow in our various career and our jobs and businesses in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Amen. we pray that you give us good session. We won't have network problems from Amen. our facilitator to all of our team members who have joined. Amen. Even pray for our team members who are yet to join. Oh Lord, hasten them so that they will benefit from today's session in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Mighty Father, and we pray that more wisdom will be on our facilitator this evening and for his business in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Um, I had shared Mr. Ekong's profile for the, for the people who had not read it, and also because we have to give honor to whom honor is due, I'd like to read it again if you don't mind. He's a serial trainer and performance coach that delivers maximum value and transformation to professionals and entrepreneurs in Africa for global success. He has 29 years Jesu, of experience in human resources, <laughs> operations, performance, and leadership. He has an MBA from the prestigious Lagos Business School and is a member of the International Coaching Federation. He's an internationally certified transformational coach and an accredited personality and emotional intelligence assessor, or BAU. Akarimo is a certified <laughs> mental health counselor from the Richmond University, USA, and attended the Bex Institute for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, USA. He holds a diploma in counseling from the Blackford Center UK and is undergoing a diploma in youth counseling at the Institute of Counseling UK. He has experience helping youths and adults to overcome depression, suicide and anxiety. He believes that individuals who encounter him will succeed no matter what life throws at them. Amen. Akanimo is currently the founder Amen. and managing director of Candor Consulting Limited, a responsive and authentic HR solutions provider, providing training, coaching, recruitment, employee well-being programs, and team building services. He's passionate about good governance, cycling, research, and competitive entertainment. I am so honored to welcome Mr. Ekong to come and share with us this evening. This is the Advanced HR Professionals Group of the Covenant Nations Community Groups. And we are honored to have you, sir. You have the floor now. Ah, this is the I will not tell them how you've been looking for my trouble for the last, ever since we met, looking for my trouble. Uh, <laughs> but thank you, thank you. I don't know whether I wrote, now that I've read that thing I, or listened to it, I need to edit it. Uh -uh, it's too much, oh. only me. Okay, so good evening. Was, this is inspirational. No, 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 no. no. It's perfect. As in, the thing was inspiring me as I was reading it. Please leave it like uh, this. We have seen it already on our group. Uh, the problem with that now, when I now, I better live up to this presentation, better live up to. Hey, hey. Ah, Father Lord, help me. Okay, so good evening, everyone. 8 p.m. Nice one. Nice to spend your, thanks for spending your Saturday with me at 8 p.m. I hope this, I trust this will be very engaging. Um, please let me know, do, will we take questions at the end or people just jot in anytime they want to, just let me know. Um, they will just uh, let me know. We'll have a few minutes at the end for people okay. to take questions. It would be nice if you leave us. we like to be out of here by about 9, 10, 9, 15 latest. But we have nothing. We came here to listen to you, sir. So. Uh, oh, okay, great. Okay, now you put. I was wondering what I was going to be discussing for two hours. So thank you so much. Nine fifteen. So that's about an hour, an hour plus. Yes. Thank you so much. So let me share my. Let me share my screen. And uh, let's go. 
So can you see my screen? Not yet, but I'm sure it'll come up in a bit. Okay. Uh, is it showing up now? Still not showing up yet. That is extremely strange. Well, I might just send this thing to you. Can you see me now? Are you tired? Um, I can see you, too, but I can't see your screen. Do you want to send it to me to, to share? I'm not sure why it's not um, coming up. Do you want to send it to me? Are you sending it to me, boss? Can everyone hear me? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I'm not sure Mr. Ekong is still online, though. He's gone. On. On. Okay, he's still there. Maybe. Okay. okay. Sorry, we didn't get that. Okay. We prayed over this network. We cannot have issues. We're going to get that screen shared right now in Jesus' name. You can send it to me, though. Amen. OK. I'm going to send it to you. What's up, email email. Sorry, everyone. This is not. Okay. If from your email address again is zero. If your email address again. It's tire.eotim at oh okay, the screen sharing is showing. It's it's about to show. Uh, what's going on? What's it it says you started screen sharing, but we can't see anything. <laughs> that's because I'm not even there. That's what's that's what's funny. I'm trying to send, send you the email. I'm giving it to you now, just in case, but I'm going to still try and do the screen share. Uh, OK, you should work now. Okay, I'm gonna try. Okay. 
Okay, so I was unable to send it because the file was quite is big. Uh, can you see it now? No. Stop sharing and then start again and let's see if that solves the problem. Yeah, yeah, I've done that thing. Stop sharing. We just have a black. Ah, there you go. We can see your screen now. Oh, did it go off again? It's gone off again. Oh, it's gone off again. It came up and then went off. <laughs> okay, so I think it's just a case of the network being slow. We just need to be a bit patient because it did show earlier on. My network is I want to my network is perfect too. I don't want yeah. to hold this my network, but It tells me I'm screen sharing right now. Okay. Yes, so we can see your screen slides. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry, that prayer worked. Sorry about that. Okay, so I won't take your time. Thank you very much once again. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, one of the things about um, Mental health is the stigma, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, today around it. And, you know, I guess the history of why there's a lot of stigma around mental health. I think it's improving now with uh, social media organizations like yours, professionals who are bringing this to the fore. Uh, so, you know, it's continuous education uh, dealing with the uh, misconceptions people have about mental health. So, it's work in progress, we're getting there. I'm really happy to see that, you know, there's a lot of awareness and people coming out of that. So once again, for this opportunity to talk about this subject that's very dear to my heart and a lot of uh, people's hearts now. I'll start with a little uh, uh, story. How many people agree that God has a sense of humor or feel God is all about being serious and judgment and uh, and all that, but you know, I think I believe that God has a sense of humor. Um, I remember some years ago, long before I got married. Um, so there I was on the plane traveling to somewhere part of some part of the world, and as is typical with introverts like myself, when I'm on the plane um, and someone that doesn't exactly enjoy flying, when I'm on the plane, all I want to do is eat. Um, eat if the food is nice and listen to my music and you know sat down on the plane just getting ready to endure take off and read my books and all that and all of a sudden I heard this baby crying the baby was, was crying during takeoff and then I said okay you know what maybe when we get you know when we stabilize he or she would you know uh, be quiet and so I can have my peace you know uh, don't hate me. This is how I felt at the time. And there we had stabilized, passing the pilot said, passing your remote, your seat belts, and this baby was crying. So long and short was that my my six hour you know trip to wherever it was I was going to uh, for a good uh, more than half of those hours that baby was crying. That baby was crying. So I didn't have my you know I tried to use my headphones to drown out the noise. I couldn't. And I had this very wicked thought. Wicked. Please don't judge me. And I said to myself, I said, in my mind, I said, look, this baby cannot keep quiet. Why didn't they keep the baby in the luggage compartment? I said in my mind, I didn't say it out. 
and uh, as you know, nobody heard me, but you know, someone else, someone heard me. Uh, and so fast forward several years later, married my second child, fl uh, flying to Abuja. And just as we're about to take off, my son just started crying and he cried and we took off and he was crying and you know, it was a small plane uh, wailing and I was just so embarrassed. I tried everything to you know, keep this guy, you know, to keep quiet. And uh, I remember, I can't forget, you know, someone tapped me on the shoulder, someone behind me tapped me on the shoulder. And I felt this person was going to say, um, you know, can't you keep this baby quiet? We're trying to read, we're trying to rest. And I turned around and then this guy, you know, handed me a, lollito a lollipop. I said, oh, this, this, should, this should help him. And, you know, it's almost like that flashback where you just remembered that evil thought you had several years ago. And I said, you know, this guy was so kind and should love empathy. And uh, you know, I was really touched. And later on, later on, when we were getting our luggage, they said, how's your son? How is, how is he feeling? And all that. Um, and this, the second story I would tell is that some years ago, that I can't, be, can't really remember the year, but there was this time that some guy, some crazy Nigerian guy tried to bomb a plane with his, I don't know, his feet or his legs or something. Then it was a Nigerian guy. And for many of us, we felt Nigerian bomb plane killing himself. Why? And that was long before Boko Haram and all the crazy stuff that we're used to. And um, I remember I, was, I remember being very angry that this guy had given the impression that you know Nigerians are people that would want to take their own life, not to talk about taking other people's lives. And every time I heard that, you know, some person and some student was somewhere in Adamawa, Abuja, Lagos, Plateau, somewhere, and I would hear stories like someone tried to kill himself. I would say to my, I would say to myself or out loud that that person can be Nigerian. That person can, he must, the person cannot be Nigerian, must be some foreigner. And if you say, no, but the person was Nigerian, then I was trying to trace the roots. Maybe the person grew up abroad or is, you know, is a mixed race. I had those uh, impressions. And so I tell these two stories because several years later, you know, here I am, a counselor, mental health professional, and having to show empathy towards people who have attempted suicide, who are going through depression, um, just reminds me that you know God does have a sense of humor. That there I am yabbing, or there I was yabbing people so many years ago and saying, You cannot be Nigerian. Why would you want to take your life? You must be crazy. That must be silly of you. But now having you know that heart of empathy towards people who have attempted suicide, and there have been a number of people that personally have counseled, I'm sure many of you have uh, either heard on social media that. There are people who have attempted uh, suicide, and there's nothing crazy um, about them. Okay, so later I was done justice, so I would uh, I won't spend time here. Um, I read chemical engineering, so if there's any engineer in the house, hello, and please don't beat me. I never practiced it, uh, so my education is never wasted. So I read chemical engineering, but never practiced it went straight into sales and the rest, as they say, is history, went into human resources, passionate to help people in organizations. And about six years ago, decided to do my own thing and help professionals and entrepreneurs to succeed no matter what life throws at them. Because life can be tough and rough. So I went to University of Benin, proud of Uniben. I don't know about now, but is anybody from Uniben out there, please give me a shout out uh attended Eagles Business School and for packaging I like to say I attended the Harvard Business School as well even though I just attended a five-day course so I don't think I'm telling a lie there but it's good to put it down okay so I'm not uh, coaching counseling and training people and doing team building I really may be a lot for some but it's something that's still very dear to me. So I love uh, reading. Kem, Kem set me up the other day and sent me a WhatsApp and she was showing me a book. So why is she showing me this book? Did she write a book or something? She said, oh, see this book you gave me, I don't know, five, 10, 15 years ago. I said, what? 
So I hope you're ready to. Anyway, um, so yes, I do I like. <laughs> oh, great! Excellent. So I do like reading. Uh, I like watching movies, thrillers, uh, not comedy or romance. Um, currently enjoying The Crown on Netflix. So hook me up if you're doing that. And food must be peppery in my eye, or else, or in my taste buds, or else I'm not enjoying it. So I'm just curious. Uh, is there anybody out there who's a millennial like myself? So I'm, not, I'm sure these years are correct. Uh, but if you're a millennial out there, give me a, a shout out. And you can please don't betray my true age and where I belong here. Okay, so um, I share this because, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, sometimes fun talk about millennials. Uh, <laughs> uh, to the matter that 60, 70% of the workforce currently is uh, millennials, and I think that's going to grow. So they brought their they brought their impact into the organization, and organization no longer can uh, is such a large force that you no longer can dismiss. I think during the NSARS uh, protests, I think organizations leaders now realize you know the power that the millennials, millennials have, and some of their general preferences and, uh, and how they like to be managed and things. But this is not a conversation around that, even though when it comes to mental health, I do want to touch on one or two things concerning millennials. So uh, generally speaking, I know people don't like to be put in the box, but generally uh, speaking, okay? Okay, so what is uh, mental health? So, very quickly, it's, um, it's about our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, okay? It determines how we think, how we feel, and how we act. Okay, so there's been, a lot of, there's been a lot of emphasis in recent times around physical well-being. And according to the WHO and what we now know, you know, health is not just your physical well-being, like most of us have been taking care of our physical uh, health, we're exercising, we're running, uh, we're doing squats. <clears throat> uh, but health is about your physical, mental, and social uh, well-being. And so that's, that really encompasses what health is. In terms of mental health, how do we handle stress? How do we ha relate to others? And how do we make day-to-day uh, -day choices as well? So those things encompass you know, mental health and um, I'm happy once again that you know there's there's been there's a lot of attention now on mental health maybe because of what we've seen um, I'll talk about some experiences I've had with uh, young adults between 18 to 28 things that are happening around them I don't 18 28 will fall under generation Y or Z as well some you know trends that we are seeing as uh, professionals as well okay so this is how the WHO defines it. You know, so are you able to reach your potential, cope with the normal stresses of life and work productively and fruitfully and contribute to your community? So mental health is huge. And I'll say it has been neglected, but I'm glad with where we are so far, where, we, where, it's, where it's heading. So, what are some myths around mental health? And I would love anyone to you know, chip in in the chat box if you uh, if you held any of these beliefs or at least if you, you held them in the past. No judgment, this is a no judgment zone. So for some people they feel, so let me know if you've ever felt that mental, once you hear mental health, you think of someone being violent and unpredictable. So if someone said, oh, I have a mental health uh, challenge, all of a sudden you're thinking, am I safe, am I safe? they are going to bring out a knife and stab me several times. So that's a myth of mental health. There are some cases where uh, people have mental illnesses and they're violent. But you know, the two matters, the statistics are like two to 3%. So most mental health uh, cases are not, are not violent, they are not violent related cases. So that is a myth that people have held. Uh, some people feel, ah, oh, once you have a mental health challenge, it's incurable, you know, you're, you're gone for life. You have that sickness, you should be locked up somewhere 
in Yaba for life that's incurable. That is also a myth. It is absolutely incorrect with therapy and some cases medication. But in many, many cases, just talking therapy just uh, helps. And hopefully I'll have time to just share one or two experiences from uh, my life as well. Ah, some people feel it's a disgrace. I've seen this it's a disgrace to your family. So I had I heard of a case where not I heard of a case of a case where a lady had you know some mental health challenges and she told her parents and one of her one of the parents is a very very religious person high up in the in the you know in that religious establishment and it was like God forbid um, you know um, I bind I bind you don't say that and this girl was going through this really going, now she was really heading, going uh, mad. She needed attention. And, you know, the mother just kept on saying, no, um, you can't say that. You can't disgrace us. You know, Stop that, stop that. It took, you know, my intervention and my remote intervention in terms of getting someone else outside the family to go there and talk to the mother and bundle that girl out of the house to get the attention she needed. And right now she's getting the She's getting uh, medical attention. So, um, again, I think the awareness is growing. Parents are becoming more supportive. During the NSARS protest, a friend of mine, her daughter went to her. Uh, I think after seeing a lot of the you know, stuff had, had that happened at the toll gate, uh, social media and all that, she said, Mom, you know, Mom I think I'm experiencing uh, some mental health challenges. I don't know what it is. And the mom was, she called me and said, look, my daughter needs counseling. And I, you know, I'm really so proud you know, that you know, some mothers will say, no, 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 I don't want to hear. Don't say, don't say that. I will give you medicine. We pray for you and all that. Nothing wrong with prayer. Uh, but knowing that she needed attention and you know, we hooked her up with a, a counselor and you know, I said, the, the rest of the day is history. She's doing very well. So that thought of it being disgraced or is incurable is not true. The girl is functioning. She's 17, 18 years old. Uh, she's functioning pretty well right now. Okay. Uh, some people feel mental health means that you have some character flaws, 100%. Far, 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 far. That's not true. Does medication work for mental health issues? Yes, it does. Uh, but many cases do not even require uh, medication. So when medication is required, yes, we will we'll do that. I, I, I'm not... Uh, I don't, you know, offer medicine. So if, you know, if I'm counseling someone and, I, and I'm able to assess that, oh, this person needs medication, I will refer the person to uh, a clinical psychologist or something who can prescribe uh, med medication. Uh, but yes, many, in many cases, um, therapy, talking therapy just works pretty well. Is genetics, that's all, so no, so yes, um, genetics may play a factor, but you know, if you've been traumatized through you know anything, maybe it was sexual abuse, uh, witness witness something that was traumatizing, uh, some kinds of brain injury, and just the stressors, major stressors of life. A lot of people are experiencing that. You can have a mental uh, illness, so it's not purely uh, genetic. Okay, so that's uh, also a myth. Lastly, very important for us, especially as we're presenting to this advanced HR group, is the myth that friends and family cannot help. That is not true. So the fact that you may not be uh, a medical, uh, sorry, a mental health professional does not mean that you can help. In a lot of the cases that we've seen, um, that uh, you know, one can say, "Oh, you know, I'm well done. I heard you counsel this person. The person was, you know, has, was fully restored." Yes, there's some credit to our counseling ability. There's a sort of credit to um, you know certifications or the education that one has had, training one has had. But a lot of the recovery that people experience comes from a healthy family and support group. I, I counseled uh, a 20-year-old young adult recently. He had experimented with. Uh, drugs at marijuana uh, in, a, in a university here in Nigeria. And he was found out now, whether he was a chronic uh, user or I just tried it out. But unfortunately, the university 
fell down on them, uh, expelled about 10 to 15 of them. This guy was in his third year, uh, one more year to graduate. Um, rough, very painful. He came to terms with it, you know, wasn't blaming anybody. But what was most amazing for me was the parents. The parents, were they, were they upset? Were they disappointed? Yes. Did they condemn him and bring it up every moment? No. They were absolutely supportive. They brought him to me. They also received their counseling from me. And, you know, the guy I had to move to another university and you know, start afresh. But I'm just trying to highlight the importance of, of, of family versus, you know, I could have done everything I did, counsel my life away, counsel, counsel, spoken and all that. If when he gets home, He's, you know, being abused. He's treated like an outcast. You know, look at you. You went and did this and did that. I can tell you that there will be a very high likelihood that there will be a relapse. So friends and family, colleagues in the office can help. Uh, these are all myths. I'm going to, uh, in Nigeria in particular, in Nigeria, uh, particular, the two types of mental illnesses that come up very often are depression and anxiety. Um, I'm not going to go in today into things like schizophrenia and bipolar. Do they happen? Yes, are they? but they're, very, they're, they're quite rare. Uh, like I said, there, there, there are some mental health practitioners who are more skilled at dealing with that. So what uh, I've personally experienced most are depression. Uh, and what, what happened was, more occurring here in Nigeria is depression, anxiety, and substance abuse uh, disorders or just general abuse, and we'll talk about that. So this also is one of those areas that people have, uh, there's been some misnomer around depression. So the fact that you know, you're in traffic and you, know, you, you, know, you hear people say, I was in traffic for three or four hours, I'm so depressed, or, I got home and put on the lights and my generator is not working, so I slept in darkness. Or, you know, I, I, I you know, had a wedding on Saturday and went to meet the tailor on Friday. Uh, Nigerian tailor went to meet on Friday and he has spoiled my dress. I'm so depressed. Or if you're a football fan and you support teams like you team I support and your team loses, you say you're depressed. Well, uh, yes, we use that term that to say that you're depressed. But that is not depression. So these are some of the normal stresses of life. You will experience traffic. Your favorite team <laughs> would lose. There will be experiences that you will have with your tailor, your barber, your hairdresser, and all that. But that is not uh, technically what we call uh, depression. You may feel depressed, but that's really what you call it. You are sad. You are sad. You are in a bad mood. And hopefully that will last for a few hours maybe a few days, but that's not, um, that's not depression. Let me skip to, okay, so okay, let me go back. So we'll talk about, I'll talk a little bit about depression now. So what has the pandemic done uh, in terms of uh, how has it impacted the individual? Well, it's affected, we mentioned anxiety, depression is, uh, affected our social connections. So we are, and we've seen that we are social beings. And uh, while we may not have valued the social connections, ability to see your colleague in the office tomorrow, uh, go and drop by and see your mom over the weekend, um, we've now, we now realize the importance of those social connections. So physical activity has, uh, a number of people in terms of you know, we're no longer going out as often. Uh, work, the way the work has now changed from being, you know, most of us are now supposedly Zoom masters or we use Zoom so often. So these have impacted uh, the individual in more ways than we can imagine. And then schooling. So for those of us who, uh, those of you out there who have kids and all that, you know how schooling has impacted even you as an individual, not to talk about um, the children. I was to my, uh, my son, uh, my son's school recently, they said, oh, the mock exams have been poor. Uh, 
Uh, and so you know, I was speaking to other people and they said, oh yeah, mock exam generally, the results have been poor, so not only from my son's school. And so I, I was asking myself, could it be the you know, online, uh, the pandemic, you know, everyone was trying to get used to online from the teachers to the students and all that. Can that be having an impact on how well people are able to uh, uh, learn? Okay, so those things have impacted. Why is there an increase in mental illness? The answer is yes. Um, I don't have statistics from Nigeria, but you know, from all the research I've done uh, and even the intake of uh, counseling cases that I've received and even my colleagues have received, yes, there's been an increase in uh, mental illnesses. Why? What's the cause of this? Various issues here, and you know, if there's anything you want to note down or ask me about later on, uh, please do. So there are fewer job opportunities, companies are laying off, that's putting a lot of financial pressure on uh, individuals uh, and their children. Uh, so the economy, the economy has been tough and now one can one say there are greener pastures out there, uh, everywhere is tough. So you get a number of uh, people who have lost jobs in the USA, uh, the other day I was told, how is it British Airways or Virgin Atlantic laid off 2,000 to 4,000 pilots, South African airline. And I really had a lot of, I was, I was really feeling a lot of empathy and saying, so what do you do? You've been trained as a pilot all your life for, for the last 10, 20 years and you've been laid off. What, where do you start from? Okay, so um, airlines have had to shed weight and not only airlines, I'm sure either you've experienced or you know someone who's experienced losing their job and things becoming much, much tougher. Uh, ironically, during the 2020 uh, lockdown, as tough as things were for me as an individual and as a family man, I kept on thinking of a lady in church who runs a, uh, a travel agency. I said, so how, where do you start from? At least for the way that we train, we coach, we counsel, you know, there was the online option of doing virtual uh, training and coaching and counseling. Where do you, as, as, at least as of that time in 20, early 2020, where do you start if you're, a, 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 you know, a travel agent? But you know, I've been following her progress, and she, you know, she's pretty much transformed. Like many of us, I believe, have bounced back up and transformed. So, um, peer and social media has put a lot of pressure both on parents and children. So whether it's a number of likes that you're looking at, whether it's, hmm, my mates have their children abroad, me too, I'm going to kill myself. And uh, uh, even when it's not working out, I must do the same. I have to, I have to, using those strong words of I have to. Uh, so lots of pressure has put, um, you know, people are, some people are not able to cope. Uh, we already talked about COVID-19 from, issues around just social connections, uh, people not able to see the people that they normally would bond with, hang out with after work. That has had a huge effect on, on people. Uh, trauma, you know, there have been cases of you know, traumatized, maybe as uh, when you were young, these also have led to an increase in social and uh, mental illnesses as well. Unfortunately, uh, substance abuse seems to be on the rise. Um, I've counseled a number of young adults, every, anything between 16 to 25, and you'll be shocked uh, and quite disturbing. Number of youth, I can speak for the, male, the males, not the females. I'm not saying that, not saying that the, the ladies are not involved in this as well, but most of the uh, cases that I refer to me are young male adults. And marijuana is baseline. It's, you know, it's, that's just the baseline. That's, that's where they're starting from. And then from there, and, and you know, many, in many parts of the world, marijuana is legal. So for them, not a big deal. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how you coped when you were in university and you weren't able to... Uh, read, you know, you wanted to stay up late. How did you, can someone, 
let me make sure I'm talking to uh, you guys are still there, right? Nobody is frying plantain or watching Barcelona match, right? Um, how did you cope when you were in university and you wanted to stay up late and read and cope with uh, the stresses of uh, academics? Let me see who is out there. Does coffee, coffee and Coca Cola and aspirin. Coca Cola and aspirin, okay. Coffee. Soaking your legs in cold Coffee, water. Coffee, putting legs in cold water and soaking Gary. I never. Okay, long walk. So, so you can see, so a lot of, a lot of healthy <laughs> chewing gum to legs in cold water. I don't know which school they did to two went to, but this one passed me. I never, never heard that. But yeah, healthy stuff, gum. <laughs> oh, you are okay. Uh, long walks, walk, uh, leg in cold water. Yeah, so you know, quite healthy way. Some people did cola nuts, coffee and all that bitter cola yes exactly uh but for a lot of um the use i speak with now it's my one is baseline base why, why did you why did you start it well my friends were doing it why did you start it well you know exams were tough so you know and whether you're schooling you say ah because they're schooling in nigeria let's we'll take them abroad uh sorry to tell you my answer it's the ones that are abroad that have been in my one and more because there is not it's not even a, in many cases it's not even it's not even illegal so substance abuse is on the high people are mixing all sorts of concoctions that you don't want to hear about that mixing let's leave what they're mixing okay so uh but it's happening it's happening so we can't bury our heads and pretend it's not happening so so in the workplace, you might, you might have people who are indulging or you might have people who are trying to cope with the fact that their children are, are uh, indulging, okay? And changing the nature of work from whether work being online, a uh, number of people have said, well, we're happy that, you know, one of the things we like about remote work is that we're not in traffic, but I'm sure many of you can testify that you're working longer hours. So you're working from 7 a.m. on the seats, uh, affecting our necks, our lower back. The other day I did a training that I'm happy they gave me the business, but I've said to myself, I will not do that kind of training again. Uh, let, even if the pepper is plenty. I did a, I did four days training for six hours each. I said, no, 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 no. And the people didn't even put on their cameras, which made it even more frustrating my knee my knee was on fire my back was on fire and it wasn't very fulfilling even though the money was good so um that's the changing nature of work work beyond that i'm sure you know customers uh businesses are cutting costs but yet shareholders want more and competition is still fierce so lots of pressure on the on management and the employee. Okay, I'm going to oh, I'm going to skip this video. Uh, I think I've touched on most of the things already. Um, so, what is you know we talk, I talked about what depression is not, and how many, many times we use the phrase. I'm just feeling so depressed. Some guy broke my heart. I'm feeling very depressed. Uh, my hairdress, whatever, my football. Uh, favorite football club lost. Um, so for depression to, for you to really be diagnosed to be depression, to be depressed, sorry, uh, five or more of these symptoms must be present over a two week period. So, you know, like I said, the fact that the transformer in your neighborhood has broken down and you're sad for three days, doesn't mean you're, we shouldn't, we're not gonna rush you to the hospital, neither do you need to, you know, uh, look for a counselor that, hey, this person is going through depression. No. So you must experience at least four or five of these symptoms over a two week period for you to be determined to be depressed. And then you maybe need to see a counselor and uh, do some assessment. Okay, so diminished interest in things that you once found pleasurable, significant weight loss or gain, uh, decrease or increase in appetites, insomnia or hypersomnia, uh, fatigue or loss of energy, 
feelings of unworthy of worthlessness or inappropriate guilt, inability to think or concentrate, uh, recurrent thoughts of death or suicide. Okay, so again, uh, spoiler alert, the same way uh, when COVID came out and you know, all of a sudden, you know, I'm sure for some of you, once you're sneezing or you feel you have a sore throat, for some of you, you must have felt, hi, I have COVID. -o. Well, and they said you have to have several of those symptoms for you to start thinking of maybe do I have COVID. Likewise, uh, the fact that you've suddenly lost a lot of weight uh, or you're not sleeping well doesn't mean that you're clinically depressed. Okay, you have to have four or five of these. You have to observe that your friend, colleague, better have for you to be for you to think that the person very likely has depression. Let me run very quickly. Okay. Anxiety comes up, uh, like I said, during in 2020 in particular, um, there are lots of cases of people going through anxiety and SARS, the riots uh, and all that. So, but you know, we all have those temporary feelings of nervousness for certain life experiences. Again, for you to be determined to be really uh, suffering from anxiety, then this must also be occur for over a long period of time. Okay, so um, these are cases that we usually hear about. PTSD, we hear a lot about it in the movies. Uh, like I'm not going to talk about uh, PTSD uh, here. Uh, we all have some people have phobias where there's uh, spiders, uh, cockroaches, heights, water, uh, and all that. There are ways of dealing with those phobias uh, through cognitive behavioral ther therapy. Um, some people often have panic disorders. There are ways of identifying that and dealing with that as well. Um, but like I said, these are the two most common ones, uh, mental illnesses that we experience uh, in Nigeria, both clinical depression, uh, generalized anxiety, and um, substance abuse, and some cases of suicide um, ideation or attempts. Okay, so what are some things that we can, I'm looking at the time, so it's about seven minutes to nine, um, Eta, you want us to close by what? 9.15, is that correct? Yes, boss, 9.15 is good. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Okay, so we're making uh, Please, everybody, be patient. Thank you very much. We didn't log in on time. He was waiting. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm, I'm running through. Okay, so um, how do we hack our brain? So, you know, there, there are, it's very interesting that brain science has shown that there's some chemicals in the brain that affect our moods. Okay, there's some chemicals in the brain that affect our moods. And so they call we, um, the, the nickname is they are happy hormones. And so how do we hack those happy hormones? Because these affect how we feel. So long before you even maybe need to see a counselor or, or, or get treatment, there are some things that we can do to maintain our mental health. We talked about you know, how the WHO defines mental health. How can we maintain our mental health. I'll talk about a few of them. So there's a group, there's a, a, a chemical called dopamine. Uh, if you watch those black movies, you know, they'll talk about dope. And that's where they got that phrase from. How do you um, increase the dopamine levels in your system and feel better? I'm sure many of you know, sometimes, you know, when you, you have tasks over the weekend, you say, I want to do these 10 tasks. How do you feel when you tick off those tasks? You know that feeling when oh man, I've accomplished, accomplished that task. I'm sure there's someone out there, you know, you feel quick, much better. Well, it releases that feel good hormone of dopamine. It makes you just feel better. So even when we're doing therapy with people who are clinically depressed, we say, hey, you know, why don't you, let's set a goal for yourself. What, what do you want to achieve? You might say, well, I just want to take a walk. I want to start walking. I want to uh, write a chapter of a book. You know, completing those tasks and just taking, taking it off has a way of boosting that dopamine. It's called the reward uh, chemical. Uh, celebrating wins, you know. So there may, there's some people here who maybe ran the Access Bank 
marathon, I could do, you know, I don't know, 40,000 steps so they can run 20 kilometers. But, you know, when, you're, when someone's going through depression or something, or when you're just trying to maintain your mental health, we say start small, take baby steps. Maybe you've never even walked one kilometer, you've never even done 2,000 steps. When you do those 2,000 steps, celebrate it, okay? I'm not saying go and buy ice cream and lose and add all the weights that you uh, <laughs> that you lost, but you know, celebrate it, celebrate yourself, whatever it is. These are little tips that you can practice on yourself and help to boost people's moods. I hope I'm speaking to someone out there. Okay, the second chemical is called oxytocin. It's called the love chemical, and you know, I'm sure you can testify to this whether you're a lady out there or a guy. How do you feel sometimes when you're really when you're really feeling down and your better half hugs you or cuddles you or kisses you and all that? So it actually releases the uh, hormone called oxytocin, which or the chemical called oxytocin, which makes you feel better. All of a sudden, you find that oh, after he hugged me, I felt much better. And it's not just being in the movies; it helps. Okay, so uh, singing and listening to music. Uh, and getting vitamin C, vitamin D from the sun also boosts the uh, chemical called oxytocin. So I hope you're taking some notes. There's little things that, these are little steps that you can take long before you need to see a counselor uh, that can help to boost or maintain your mental health. Endorphins. So whether you like it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, I'm sure there are people out there who exercise there's a feeling you get when you finish exercising. You may not like it when you're doing it, but how many of you can testify that after a good exercise, there's a feeling, there's a good feeling you get. So many times when I'm stressed out and I'm cycling and I go out cycling, man, it's tough climbing those Lagos hills, uh, uh, sweating and all that, but you, know, you feel that they boost. That boost is called endorphins. So uh, watching a comedy, exercising, and a little bit of dark chocolate, not plenty, uh, also helps to boost that chemical called endorphins. Uh, lastly, is serotonin. So getting a massage, um, again, some sunlight, 15 minutes, 30 minutes of sunlight, uh, particular times of the day, helps to boost serotonin and makes you feel much better. So the acronym is DOSE, D-O-S-E, uh, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and uh, endorphins. And these, while you may not have studied biology, it doesn't really matter. It's all about how can you boost your moods or those of your colleagues. Um, if someone is going through something, you, know, you can recommend any of these things. And, you know, as they say, if the symptoms persist, maybe the person needs to see a counselor. But prior to that, you'd be surprised what exercise, exercise in particular, can do in terms of helping you to boost your mood. Other tips I would love to share, uh, connecting with others. So especially during this time, we tell people, hey, do sessions like this. If your family is outside uh, your region, connect with them preferably through video. So connecting with others, spending time in nature. Anybody, I know some people are hissing and saying, I, I, Lagos, which nature? Which nature in this Lagos? So, Kindly share if you know some places where people can spend time, but you know, medical science has shown that the, you know, just spending time in nature, as boyish as it, it may sound, has a great effect. So please share. I'm sure someone is sharing now. Thank you. Uh, the places that you can just feel much better, okay? So um, practice forgiving yourself and forgiving others, okay? That release also. And very tough one for people uh, unplugging from your devices once in a while and just spending time with yourself, whether it's meditation, prayer, uh, really helps. These are things that you can do to boost. For a lot of people, even for myself, 2020, I found out that when I was, I was monitoring those, um, uh, at that time, at some point, I was monitoring the number of cases, you know, monitoring, ah, Kogi, ah, the Lagos State, uh, Quiet Bomb and all that. I found out that I was very restless at night, at night and couldn't sleep. So I had to, at some point, I said, you know what, I'm not going to be checking out those, uh, that data every day. 
I will definitely not check it, check it out in the night. Uh, and I'm not from my devices at least two hours before going to bed. So simple tips like that really just helps. Um, we won't do this case. Um, hopefully, someone will engage me for a training on, uh, I just did a training recently on leading with empathy and we talked about how empathy is really important to people nowadays. Um, the millennials asked for it, they demanded it during the end stars. They wanted to hear their leader, our, our president, you know, the number one complaint I got was, they didn't get enough empathy. We didn't hear the empathy, the conversation in the, in the announcement and all that from our leaders. People expect empathy, even if we're letting go of people. They want to see uh, that there's some level of empathy and, and, and care in how we're displaying it. So HR professionals, empathy is a big, big uh, issue. Uh, there's a case I shared in, the, in that course. Uh, most of you might have read it. You can check it out online. Uh, where Airbnb, Airbnb laid off people in 2020. But if you, you know, I can share that with Aitaya. Maybe she can share it with the rest of you. Uh, or you can look for it online. Just the way it was handled and let go of over 75 percent of the staff. So it wasn't an easy decision. It wasn't, you know, but it was a master lesson in how to handle things and treat people with uh, dignity and value and respect, even when you have to take some really tough decisions. So uh, HR leaders, it's important that you know that people expect empathy. And yes, people should be treated with value and respect even when things are tough. So we won't do this case now. Um, I just usually share on how what empathy is, but many people feel, many people have a misunderstanding of what empathy is and how you should respond to people when they tell you something and not, you know, for instance, someone tells you, oh, I got, I have COVID, I caught COVID. You don't say things like, ah, no big deal. I, I, I got it last year now. What's the big deal? You know, that's not empathy. Um, saying AI is not empathy either, you know? Um, and then turning the conversation around and saying, oh, that reminds me of one time this thing happened to me, oh, that's not empathy. Uh, so as we round up or as we close down, as HR professionals, what can you do? So there's some proactive things that HR can do uh, to help create the awareness around uh, mental health issues in the workplace and to help people who may be going through situations like that. And there's some also responsive things that you can do as well. And I'll share this before we go. Um, psychological safety is something that's very dear to me. And uh, as HR professionals, you know, people are going through stuff. You've observed that, you know, as like I said, showing empathy, uh, not dismissing their, you know, when someone is going through something and not saying, ah, what's the big, no big deal now. Ah, you know, maybe some, maybe some boss shouted on the employee and you're saying, ah, this boss shouts on everybody, it's not a big deal. You know, you're not dismissing the emotions that they're going through. You're not turning the conversation to yourself. Uh, naturally, I don't have to share, say to HR professionals that confidentiality is key, uh, providing a judgment, free zone and limiting uh, distraction so that the person feels that he or she has your attention. Uh, listening more. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, asking if he or she has social support because it's a great danger if someone does not have social support uh, because you're not, you're not living with the person. The person is just coming to the office. So, and, and lastly, you know, providing an environment where, hey, you know, you've done your part, you've provided that safety, safe space for the person to speak freely. And then you can say, hey, you know, I know a great counselor. I know some people out there who can help you further. Are you open? Uh, to this. So those are some things that HR professionals uh, can do. I often get asked this question, um, someone committed suicide, we're all in the office, we couldn't tell. Uh, how do you know if someone is going to commit suicide? Well, I will say this upfront, I mean, someone does unfortunately commit suicide, it's nothing for us to feel guilty about. 
Uh, but are there things that you can look out for? Uh, obviously, someone can disguise it if he or she wants to. Um, gloomy, I'll say, I'll highlight just two or three things here. Um, so gloomy talk, if someone starts talking about what's the point of life, um, I'm a burden to my family, there's no hope in this country, you know, it should, it should just trigger some alarm bells, let's just be more sensitive. Um, one of the ones that, you know, people have noticed over time is someone's status, all of a sudden, someone usually has a nice status, lovely face, pictures, and all, all of a sudden, uh, the status is black and all that. Uh, recently, there was a lady, 2019, all of a sudden, her status went black. She wasn't answering her calls. And so, you know, a group of friends in uh, the local assembly just reached out to her. And, you know, they, I, I, I will say that they, they saved that girl's life because they were sensitive enough to notice that something was amiss. They reached out to her and then they, re they looked for her house. They weren't sure where she was living. They found out and they broke down the door and uh, they found her. So, you know, as we started off in prayer, just, you know, asking God to, for us to just be a bit more sensitive. You know, Lagos, especially in Lagos, your Nigeria, hustle and bustle and all that, but just <clears throat> being a bit more sensitive to what's going on around us. So. Um, that dark status, people usually sometimes very often leave signs there, like I said, low, gloomy talk, social uh, withdrawal. And even, you know, someone is normally very happy-go-lucky, comes into the office, hi, everybody, how's everything? And all of a sudden, person is very quiet and calm. Let's just be our brother's keeper and ask, you know, what's going on? Is everything okay? How can I help? You know, how can I help? Okay, so those are just... Uh, a couple of tips, uh, and I would willingly share these slides if you need them. Um, I'm not alone, so I'm always I'm, I'm surrounded by a great company of mainly women. <laughs> so in some cases, uh, when I have some cases, uh, some some people prefer to talk to a lady, and I say, sure, I'm not. No offense, I'm not offended. So I will hand you over to uh, Baby Sola, who's a seasoned counselor, or Dr. Deb Zotikoya, who's in the UK, or Mrs. Susweli, our, our auntie, our mommy, our mentor. When, you have, when I have very, uh, maybe elderly people who want uh, marriage counseling or grief. So um, just sharing that, you know, the number of professionals here in Nigeria who are out there, who I'm linked with, and all that. And <clears throat> whether it's, uh, like I said, substance abuse, I uh, need a nutritionist, uh, physiotherapy, or domestic violence. Mm, that's another area where there's a lot of stigma, especially from the recipient. Um, so we do our best to help counsel both the abuser and the abusee, and in many cases, I actually tell, in, and in most of the cases, I won't lie, that the person who's being abused is the, the lady. I usually advise, please get out of the house. I'm not saying, I'm not saying divorce. I'm saying get out of the house so that you are not killed, so that you are not put in harm's way, and then you can take things from there. Lagos State has a very efficient, uh, body called DSPRT, I think that's what Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team. Um, and so, you know, that guy, that person is putting, he's laying his hand on you and beating you up and you report to that team. <laughs> that's all I can say. So there are resources, I'm just saying there are resources out there that can help uh, individuals who are going through stuff. And so as HR professionals, Let's make use of those resources or get in touch with me. What are some proactive things that HR can do to help individual employees? Um, there's a rise in employee, in employee assistance programs and wellness programs. So I'm really happy to hear that. Um, I just got an engagement from an oil company last week uh, to provide this service for their staff. So the companies are paying. Um, all we provide is like a hotline staff have issues, they want to talk to a counselor, you know, they contact our hotline and then we have 
uh, sessions with them. Those sessions are not, the details of those sessions are not shared with HR, they're not shared with management. HR or management just provides the platform for employees to have, you know, uh, counseling on a wide range of issues from, you know, whatever issues you have, you have issues with. And it also includes, you know, career counseling, uh, life coaching and all that. So employee assistance and wellness programs are on the increase. Happy to that forward-looking companies are engaging on that. Um, like I mentioned, empathy training. Uh, I'm trying to emphasize that a lot because not, many times people don't show empathy and that also adds to uh, the way people are feeling their moods <clears throat> and whether they're getting depressed. So leaders in particular, training them on empathy and how to respond to employees when they're going through issues. Doesn't mean that uh, employees will get away with nonsense. Doesn't mean that you never let people go, um, but still you can still treat people with dignity and show empathy. So we're doing uh, doing that. I'm sure uh, lots of virtual meetings, lots of virtual meetings are taking place nowadays. We just encourage uh, HR to throw in a lot of fun, uh, lots of ideas. I'm sure you guys know that already in your meetings, uh, physical exercise competition. So just growing that sense of awareness of physical, uh, the importance of physical exercise, uh, lots of competitions that you can, healthy competitions you can do within the office, uh, even if your work, people are working remotely. To uh, have the double whammy of making sure that they're improving their physical well-being, and by improving their physical well-being, very likely you're impacting their mental wealth, health, well-being as well. I'm sure many of us are experiencing this as well as already. So a lot of individuals, employees, millennials in particular, they don't like our performance management systems. They don't like the normal performance management systems. Working remotely provides an opportunity because uh, no longer would HR and management be keen on Attendance, attendance, did you get to work at eight? Which is what a lot of millennials have been shouting about for a long time. Why does it matter what time I come to work? I can work on any time, measure me on how productive I am and all that. So there's going to be a growing need for remote performance management systems. I can always connect you or recommend uh, some for you as well, where there will be ongoing conversations and you know monitoring performance uh, regularly. That's what people want more of. Uh, so I'll just run through that. So support affinity groups, you know, encouraging people to join groups, whether it's uh, running groups, walk, walking groups, cycling, enrolling them in gyms. These are some proactive things that HR uh, can do. And, you know, let's, uh, as much as possible, as you can see, some of these things are, some of these things do cost money and some of them don't cost money at all. So facilitating healthy meals and snacks in the office, uh, it costs a little bit of money, but it's worth it, okay? And let's encourage regular team building sessions, whether that's virtual or physical, okay? Because of time, I won't show this video um, or this one or this. So let me skip. So these are my con contact details um, is 14 past nine um, my time is well spent and uh, a tile yes for questions so I hope that I can get yeah, a we can of maybe two or three questions um, if you have a question, please type or just unmute and speak. I think you should raise your hand first. We're quite the number, we're 21. Um, so please, um, anybody has a question? Question, comments, we need to go. Yes, we've okay. started thanking him already, but we need the questions as well. Anybody, question, comments? If you don't have this man, time on you. Hmm. Did you see that profile? You cannot keep him here. He's doing this one for us. <laughs> As for our egg going in the house. Uh, I'm not aware. Um, so yeah, so please, any questions, anything you want to take away, uh, any light bulb movement for you, or anything you plan, you plan to implement in your life, in your organization, just share anything. I know uh, time is far spent. It's Saturday, it's night. 
Um, okay, somebody asked a question. Isn't should there be a penalty for substance abuse in a formal system? Yes, there should be. In a, this, they, 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 they should be, and you can, you're, you can have very clear policies around that. The same way, if there's violence in the office, you're not going to accept that and all that. Can people still be treated with respect, uh, even though they have those kind of issues? Yeah, so, you're, uh, so for instance, maybe the person has to go, maybe the person's on suspicion, but HR can still say, hey, you know, you were caught doing X, Y, Z. You know, one of the things that we have, we have some recommended counselors that you can, you, you can see. So yes, we're giving you the whatever, sledgehammer, or, you know, we're following the policy. We're also saying, hey, maybe you need some help. And so there's a counselor you can see. These are three or four counselors that you can speak to. So I like that question, Lulu uh, Moriwa, but it shows, it shows that you can still stick to your values and policies but at the same time, let the person know that, yeah, you're human. Yeah, maybe you fell into this uh, trap. Hey, this is, uh, please go and see this person uh, who is on our system or in our EAP. So thank you very much. Thank you, Esther, very educative. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, sir. I think that we can call it. Oh, one more question. This is the last one, and then we really have to go. OK. OK, so um, how do you counsel an employee facing domestic violence at home? Hmm. OK, so tough. Thank you, MM. Uh, that's my sister's name. Um, Again, so I, I will just go back to the slide I said before. So showing a lot of, showing empathy, uh, listening, no judgment, no judgment. Um, obviously clearly it's, you know, it's between the person, has, the person has brought it up to you, obviously you're respecting confidentiality, uh, but just, you know, just really just being human and you know, asking for ways that you can support uh, them. You know, do you need time off? Um, what help do you need? Are you getting legal support? Are you staying in the home? We have a counselor you can talk to. Again, just really being there uh, for the person, asking them how they can support, asking them how you know the organization can support. Many times the person will tell you, oh, I just, I just need a couple of days off, or maybe for this period, I might be coming to work late or something. Let's see where we can you know, strike a balance and see where you can support. Do you need legal support? Can we as HR point you to somewhere where you need legal support? There are these resources that's like DSVRT, uh, these homes you can move to if you know it's getting hot. They're just it's just showing that that care. And like I said, knowing that there are resources that are available. If the person needs help, should we refer you to someone who can help you take it from there? Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh Muiwa has thrown in one. How do you deal with a boss whose mental health situation has affected the organization as a whole? That is a tough one. Let me just go. That's a really tough one. Though. We can deal with that either off, offline. That is big. Uh, yeah. That may involve HR, that may involve management. Um, the person may need, you know, the uh, person may need coaching. Uh, in many cases, the person needs coaching. So I'm coaching a, an executive right now. Fantastic guy, high flying, but uh, it might not be mental health challenges per se, but he's providing a very toxic culture in the organization, yet he's a high performer. So the organization has decided it's not wise to let him go because he does perform and deliver the goods. But at the same time, he needs help. So they got him a coach. I'm coaching him right now, and you know we're making good progress. So sometimes it's getting that individual and sitting down with him and saying to him in a nice way, you know, you may need help, whether it's the MD that's going to do that, whether it's HR that's going to do that, but that individual needs um, help. And in stronger, people where, in companies where the culture is very strong, if that behavior persists, HR or management should know what to do. But uh, as a first step is giving the person that helping with the person with that intervention. We all, sometimes people just need a little, Everyone needs some support, and we say everybody needs a coach. Is it okay to dismiss an employee who has meant who has a mental challenge? No, it is not okay. No, it's not okay. Again, again, we're defining 
happen. I don't know. The, I don't know the details of the case. If the person is violent and all that, then let's provide the support first. If the person is going through depression, he's just lost somebody, she was sexually abused, uh, and all that, and then you dismiss someone because they are not um, themselves for a couple of weeks, then that would not be fair. But like I said, the person is being uh, bringing violence into the workplace. That's a different matter. But you know, before going straight for the uh, hammer, let's see how we can help before taking uh, those actions. All right. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to ask Nkechi or Diego to please just give a short vote of thanks before we round up in prayer. Thank you. Nkechi. Wow, wow, wow. I am here. Thank you so much, um, our speaker. The session has been awesome. A real eye opener. Yes, we've been hearing about mental health and all that, but you brought new perspectives to the session this evening. We're so thankful and so honored to have you in our midst. We thank you for the insights you've shared. And um, the nuggets we've garnered from this session today will also help us in building stronger and healthier relationships in our sphere of influence. So once again, I want to appreciate you, sir. I will say keep up the good work and may God continue to bless and increase you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much Amen. for coming. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Great all comments, right. great questions, and thank you, Itai, for organizing this. God bless okay. you all. And thank you very much. Thank you. Good I'll share this slide. Good members, yeah, please stay on the call. All right. Um, we had a few people from, I think it was Proficient Group. It's nice to see you here. God bless you all. Um, it's been a long night, but we have learned so much. This, this has been awesome for me. I'm going to ask um, Joshua. Is, this is not Joshua Banye. Um, I need a man, one of the men in my... Okay, Oluwa Femi, please can you close us in prayers? Thank you. Okay, he's not there. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Please pray. Thank you very much. Father, we want to thank you this evening for 